Hello everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to this trip report. Today I'm flying from Winnipeg, Manitoba to Calgary, Alberta on Flair Airlines Flight 137 operated by their Boeing 737-400. Flair Airlines is an ultra low cost carrier that originally started up in 2005 as a charter operator but moved to scheduled service in 2017 offering low fares across most of Canada. Their main hub is located in Edmonton, Alberta, but they also have a few domestic destinations from my hometown of Calgary, one of those being Winnipeg. In May last year, I found a fairly good deal between the two cities for $150 return just to see what Flair was like and to cross the 734 off of my list. This was my first time flying through Winnipeg and I have to say they have a pretty nice terminal. It's easy to navigate and there's tons of seating. The aircraft that'll take me back to Calgary today is one of Flair's 7737-400s with the registration CFLHE, which is one of two aircraft in their 2017 livery. Flair also has some 737-800s on the way, with a few leased ones from Smartwings already flying. Because of the way I scheduled this day trip though, that meant I got off the plane from Calgary and had about an hour to wander around the terminal before I got right back on the same aircraft. Flair's boarding system is simple enough. First they call passengers that paid extra for priority boarding along with families, followed by those sitting in the rear of the aircraft where I am today. It's worth noting that I was only traveling with a personal bag for my camera equipment. Flair will charge you for carry-ons and any checked baggage. Here's my seat for the next 90 minutes, 17F, located just behind the wing. As it often is for me being 6 foot 8, the legroom is not good. Generally, I'll try to get an exit row seat, but I wanted a better wing view, so here I am. It's tolerable for this 90 minute flight though, especially since this is still a unique aircraft for me. I do want to mention that the flight attendants saw my predicament and did try to move me, but the exit rows and other extra legroom seats were already occupied. After takeoff though, they did move my neighbor in the middle seat for some more space and that was much appreciated. The cabin itself isn't anything special. It's what you would expect on a 20 year old aircraft like this one. At the very least, the headrests are adjustable and the overhead bins are a decent size. For now, here's our departure from Winnipeg off of runway 34.
After that windy takeoff, I got up to stretch my legs and get a better look around the cabin. The rear lavatories on Flare 737s are adequate. Again, nothing terribly special, but they're still larger than most newer ones on the 737 MAX. Flare offers a good, if not pricey, variety of food to purchase on board, but strangely, none of it was available on my flight. Passengers had a choice of complimentary coffee, tea, or water. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that these used to be old WestJet seats. A bit ironic if that's the case. While there's no in-flight entertainment at all, as you would expect, there's still the view outside, which is always my favorite part, as I'm sure it is for many of you watching right now. More from me on the ground. After arriving, I was fortunate enough to take a look around the flight deck, thanks to the friendly crew. Wow. 
Overall, my experience with Flair Airlines really wasn't bad. On the outbound flight to Winnipeg, the crew wasn't terribly friendly, but this flight's crew more than made up for that fact. The seats were alright, and the legroom was, well, pretty bad for me, but they'll be just fine for the average height passenger. As far as Flair's customer service goes, well, for me, I had to call them after something strange happened with my seat selection, and even though it took 45 minutes to get through, once I was there, they were very helpful and resolved the issue without any further problems. Keep in mind though, this whole video was filmed in July of last year, almost eight months ago now, so it's very likely that things have changed since then. In my opinion, you get what you pay for, and really for the price that I paid, Flair was just fine. I would definitely fly with them again if I find another good deal and, you know, maybe an exit row seat. Maybe. So yes, that was my experience with Flair Airlines from Winnipeg to Calgary on board their Boeing 737-400. Let me know what you thought of this different trip report format with the voiceover and maybe if I should keep doing that for future ones. Leave that in the comments below. Thanks for watching this trip report and safe travels.